In today's video, we're going to continue learning how to use Filmora 14, and this time we're going to dive into more advanced features like masking, color grading, removing background, creating speed ramps, using grids for alignment, and many more. Let's dive right in. You can find a link to download Filmora 14 in the description below. Feel free to explore their website to see what this software can do, or check out our overview video, linked in the card at the top right, for more details. Let's start a new project in Filmora by clicking here, and then let's import some footage. I'm going to select all of these videos and hit open. We're asked to create proxy files. These will help you if your computer is slow, and it's basically going to help you navigate through the timeline easier and edit faster. So if you're having issues with that, you can click yes. I'm going to choose no for now. Let's drop a video into the timeline. In a previous video, which I'll link in a card at the top right, we walked through the basic features of Filmora. So if you're just getting started, I definitely recommend checking that out first. But today we're diving into some of the more advanced features and we're kicking things off with masking. Masking is a way to hide certain areas of your video while keeping specific parts visible. These masks can be shapes, lines, or even custom areas. I'm going to use a rectangle mask. Let me also adjust these windows so you can see things more clearly. Now, with this rectangle, we can change its scale, width, and height to control exactly which parts of the video are shown or hidden. Also, if you use the blur strength, sometimes called feather, you can soften the edges of the mask. You can also invert the mask. So right now, it's showing whatever is inside the rectangle. But if we invert it, it flips and shows only what's outside the rectangle instead. At the top, you can pick from different basic shapes for your mask, like circles, lines, a heart, or a star. No matter which one you pick, you'll have the same settings to adjust. You can also draw a custom mask by using the pen tool. Just click to create points, and once you connect the last point, you'll form your mask. Then you're able to customize the mask by extending it or soften the edges using the blur strength slider, and to reset the settings, just click on this reset icon here. There's also an AI mask feature. If you try to use it, it will replace your current mask. To use it, just paint over the subject and Filmora will automatically detect the subject and draw a shape around it. You can then adjust it just like you did before. You can also track the object you masked. Just hit this play button and Filmora will try to follow your subject across frames, adjusting the mask's position. But there's a pretty big downside of this feature though. The shape of the mask doesn't really change if the subject rotates or moves too much. It's more like a moving shape than a true dynamic mask. Let's reset that, because now I'll show you a more advanced way to mask by going to this AI tools section. First option is chroma key, which removes green screen backgrounds. I'll show you that shortly, but what I want to show you right now is the AI portrait cutout tool. This feature automatically detects your subject and removes the background, creating a much more accurate mask that actually follows the subject's movement. It's super quick and easy. Plus, you can add cool effects like neon dashes around the subject. You can customize the look, the size, the duration, the feathering, and even the colors. There are other effects too, each with their own settings you can tweak to match your style. If you want a faster but less precise result, you can use quick cutout mode. And if you want more detailed control, you can use smart cutout. That opens up a new window where you can manually refine your mask for even better results. Here, we can simply draw on the subject, and Filmora will automatically create a selection. If we zoom in using this menu, and then use the hand tool, we can move around and inspect the selection more closely. If there are any areas you want to remove, just switch to the erase tool and paint over them. You can switch back to the draw tool at any time to refine it further. Over here, you'll find the preview settings. You can change how the selection preview is displayed or adjust the brush settings to make more precise edits. Once you're happy with the selection, just click this icon to start tracking. Just give it a moment and when it's done, hit save and you'll see how the background has been removed. What's great about this tool is that it works on all kinds of objects. For example, I'll drag in this clip with a laptop. I'll open the smart cutout window and draw around the laptop and just like that, Filmora creates a selection. If it needs refinement, we can zoom in, move to the area using the hand tool, and then erase the unwanted parts. The goal is to isolate the object as cleanly as possible. Then click here to start tracking. You can pause anytime, and even switch to advanced mode to track forward or backward. This gives you full control to fine-tune the cutout. Once that's done, hit save again. 
you'll see the object is now separated. If needed, go back and adjust the feather to soften the edges and tweak the thickness to perfect the outline. You can fine tune the selection until you're able to hide some of the visible hard edges. And that's pretty much it for the smart cutout feature. Next we have motion tracking where you use a tracking box to detect movement. Once tracked, you can import an item from your computer and link it to that motion. Now let's move on and add this clip with the green screen to explore how chroma key works. When we enable chroma key, it instantly removes the green background. You can further refine the selection by adjusting the offset, tolerance, edge thickness, and feather settings. To connect it with what I've said before, you can apply motion tracking to the background image on the laptop, and after tracking, link the other layer to it so that your object moves along with the background. Now let's go back to the other video to move on to the next advanced feature I want to discuss, and that is color correction and color grading. In the color section, you'll find all the settings you need to edit your video. You can start by applying color presets from the Filmora library, or use lookup tables, which are also known as LUTs. You can import your own LUT and then adjust the strength of it and even protect the skin tones in the video with this slider. There's also an AI color palette feature, which helps you match the colors between two different clips. Just select a reference frame and click on Generate, then Save and Apply, and go to another clip to enable this setting choosing the preset you just created. Then again, you can refine the strength and protect the skin tones. Scrolling down, you'll see some of the most common video editing settings like the temperature and tint, vibrance and saturation, exposure, contrast, highlights and shadows, whites and blacks and all that good stuff. You also get sharpness and vignette controls. Under the next tab, you'll find the HSL panel where you can adjust each color's hue, saturation, and luminance individually. This of course is super useful for precise color work. You also have the curves window available. To help you understand how this works in simple terms, the bottom left of the diagonal controls the darks, while the top right controls the highlights. We can adjust the diagonal line by adding different points. I will make this shape which is known as an S-curve and is very common in the design world. And finally, we have the color wheels, where you can tint the highlights, midtones, and shadows. You can also copy the color settings from one clip by right clicking on it and go to Effect and Filter and hit Copy and then select another clip, right click on it, and then go to Effect and Filter and hit Paste. I want to remind you that if you want to start using Filmora, you can visit the link in the description to download it. Moving on, let's explore the speed ramping feature. For that, I'll import some new clips. I'll select them all, and then click Open. I'll choose No for proxy files, and then we'll drop the videos into the timeline. Let's remove the clips we worked on previously. Then, select the empty space and click on the X button. To access the speed ramp settings, select your clip and head to the fourth section called Speed. Here, you'll see both the uniform speed settings and the speed ramping options. Speed ramping lets you control how fast or slow your video plays using this graph. As you can see on the right side of the graph, these curves control the playback speed of your video. You can speed up your clip all the way to 10x or slow it down to 0.1x. There are also speed ramping presets available, and you can customize them by adding or removing points. You also have an option to maintain the audio pitch if you want. You can also zoom in on the graph for more precise edits. To create a point, just click this button here, drag it to adjust the speed, and then click again to add another point. Once you've made your changes, hit play to see how it affects the video. Everything in the timeline will be aligned automatically. Also, don't forget you can full screen the preview window to see your results more clearly. There's also this snowflake icon that allows you to freeze time. This allows you to stop at a specific frame and set how long you want that still image to last. After applying it, you'll notice an extra point in the timeline marking the freeze frame. Then you can see the clip duration before and after the speed ramping, and even choose the frame interpolation type. We recommend using optical flow for smooth results. If for some reason you decide to adjust the uniform speed, this will remove any speed ramping settings. You can also save your custom settings as a preset. Just click save as custom, give it a name, and it will appear in the presets list along with the others. And moving on to the next clip, you can apply the custom preset. Another tip in the preview tab is that you can adjust the playback quality. If your video is lagging during editing, go to player settings and lower the quality to half 
or even a quarter for smoother playback. Also, when you import clips, you can trim them directly from the Media tab. Simply select a clip, and in the Preview tab set the Mark In and Mark Out points, and when you add it to the timeline, it will already be trimmed. There's also an interesting setting that allows you to choose where to add the clip by default. It can be after the cursor, at the end, or just overwrite the clip. And now whenever you click that, it's going to be added automatically at the end in the timeline if you chose that. So moving on, let's try out the audio generation feature in Filmora. For that, let's go to the top left in the media tab, and here we have audio. In the AI sound effects section, we can type a prompt, and Filmora will generate a sound effect. I'm going to type in car engine rev, and then click Generate. Once the generation is complete, you will get three options, so let's have a listen. I think I like the second one the most. On the left side, you'll also find the AI music section. Once you're there, click the Choose Tag button. Filmora lets you select the mood of the song, the theme, and the genre. Based on these three tags, it will generate music that matches all your selected criteria. So let's give it a shot. For the mood, I'm gonna go with Laidback. Then for the theme, I'll pick Sports, and for the genre, I'll choose Hip Hop. Once those three tags are set, just hit Generate, and Filmora will take care of the rest. Again, you'll get three options, so let's go ahead and play them one by one. You'll notice a download button next to each track if you want to save it, and then you can also click the plus button to add it directly to your timeline. There's also a whole music and sound effects library that Filmora provides. You can explore it by scrolling through the audio section if you want to discover more. Now what I want to get to is the text-to-speech feature. This lets you generate an AI voiceover just by typing a script. Once you open it, you'll see a space on the left where you can start typing your text. I'm just going to write something simple that could fit our video. On the right you'll find a voice library where you can preview different voices and pick the one you like the most. For this one I'm going to go with Mike. Then just click this button to generate the voice. Once it's done, it'll automatically show up in your media library. Take your performance on the track to the next level with our made for speed enthusiasts. Seems like the pronunciation is a little off but with multiple tries I'm sure it'll get it right. Moving on, the next thing I want to show you is how to create animations using keyframes. Basically a keyframe, it's a point on the playback where a specific property has a set value and then, if you add another keyframe later in the playback with a different value for that same property, Filmora will automatically create an animation between the two. So for example, I have this clip right here and you can add a keyframe by clicking the little diamond shaped buttons on the right side of any property that supports keyframing. In this case, I'm going to use rotation. I'll add my first keyframe here, and you'll see it appear on the timeline as well. Then I'll play the video a bit, pause, and add another keyframe. This time I'll change the rotation value. I'll play it again, then pause once more, and add a third keyframe where I reset the rotation back to zero. That's how you create simple animations by changing values across different keyframes. You can do the same thing with opacity. For example, set a keyframe at 100%, then add another keyframe later with a lower value. If you want to view both keyframes for rotation and opacity, just click this button here. That will show all the keyframed properties on the timeline. Over here, you also get more control over the animation. You can adjust the curves using these graph controls to fine-tune how the animation behaves. There's also a button to add or remove keyframes, and you can use the left and right arrows next to the diamond icon to jump between keyframes quickly. Now let's get a bit more practical and create a dolly zoom animation. What's a dolly zoom? It's that cool effect where the subject stays in the same position in the frame, but the camera appears to move closer or further away. It creates this dramatic and cinematic feel. To create the dolly zoom effect, we need the subject to stay in the exact same position at the start and end of the animation. The easiest way to make sure everything lines up is by using guides. So first, go to this menu and enable ruler. This will add measurement lines around the preview tab. 
Now click and drag from the edges into the preview area to create horizontal or vertical guides. Let's add one for the front of the car, one for the top, another for the bottom, and one for the right side. This helps us visualize the car's position. Then move to the beginning of the clip, and here we want the car to be in the exact same spot as it is at the end. Let's go back to the end of the clip, where the car is already framed how we want, and create keyframes for position and scale. Then move to the start, and here we'll adjust the scale and position until it lines up with the guides. When you play it back, you'll see the dolly zoom in action. The car stays perfectly still while the background shifts, which looks pretty cool and cinematic. If you want to customize the guides more, head to the view menu here at the top. From there you can lock or hide guides and also toggle the ruler on or off. The last thing I want to show you in this video is how to work with text. So let's head over to the titles section in the media tab. Filmora gives you a bunch of presets in its library. Let's add one to the timeline and see how we can customize it. Besides the usual settings like scale, position, blend mode, and so on, there's also a dedicated text section here on the right where you can customize everything further. Here you can change the font, the size, the paragraph alignment, and even choose from some preset styles over here. On top of that, you have access to text animations. These let you add motion and effects to your titles to make them more engaging. And if you want even more customization, click the advanced button here at the bottom. That opens up a separate window with extra settings where you can fine-tune everything we've seen so far, plus some more settings. I hope this tutorial helped you get a better understanding of Filmora's advanced features and what it's capable of when it comes to editing. Make sure to check out their website linked in the description for more info. And let us know in the comments which feature was your favorite. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. This is Creative Society.